Hey everyone, welcome back to PC Perspective. On the block today, we have the launch of uh, a few new platforms actually, mobility platforms from AMD on their APU side. Um, today, they're actually unveiling three lineups. The first one is Richland, uh, which is actually a replacement for Trinity. There's very little that changes from Trinity. It's mostly on the software side, firmware and BIOS. They've been able to extend battery life, extend power efficiency in a few ways. Um, the two more interesting platforms are Tomash and Kabini, both of which are really built on the same chip. They're built on the same architecture, uh, quad-core Jaguar x86 CPUs, 128 Radeon cores on the, uh, on the GPU side, so it's a GCN graphics core next based architecture. So if you know about the 6000 series and the 7000 series of Radeon discrete cards, you know about GCN. Uh, obviously, quite a bit underpowered compared to some of the discrete cards. Now, What's interesting about Tomash and Kabini is that they're going to go into form factors that kind of start in this range. This is a Kabini reference platform that AMD sent us. Um, and it is a 14-inch notebook, 1080p laptop. Um, and we'll see Kabini, which is the uh, kind of a higher power 15-watt. There is one 25-watt part as well, but the 15-watt will probably be the most popular uh, SKU. And it will range from this, this machine all the way down to, say, 10-inch, uh, 8-inch tablets, where Tomash will get down to as low as 3.9 watts. Now, in Tomash, you will have dual-core derivatives of Jaguar, um, still 128 Radeon cores, apparently, obviously running at lower frequencies. So all we have today in terms of hardware to test is actually this particular laptop. And if you go to PCPer.com today, you'll see three articles that went up, actually. One that Josh wrote that looks at the architectural changes of Jaguar versus Bobcat. Uh, a second one that kind of looks at the 2013 AMD mobility range of products, Tomash, Kabini, Richland, what those different platforms will actually become. And then a third that is the actual test of this device. Um, some CPU benchmarks, some GPU benchmarks, that kind of thing. Uh, and what we found is Kabini is a, is a great product that doesn't have a lot of direct competition, and this kind of puts it in, into an interesting spot. It is above Atom in terms of its performance dramatically, but it's also above Atom in terms of power consumption. Uh, it is below kind of the, uh, the lowest level Core i3 processors in terms of power consumption, as well as performance. So it kind of fits in this area between Core i3, Pentium, uh, those kind of rebranded lower end parts, and what you get out of uh, the Atom architecture like the Clover Trail. So comparison benchmarking was actually pretty difficult on this. We've got some benchmarks there um, that show you know, how the Kabini, the A4-5000 APU, compares to the, the Clover Trail, how it compares to a Core i3-3227 ultra-low voltage part. And then we also threw in um, a, a desktop Sandy Bridge Core i3-2105, just because we had a lot of numbers for that. It's not a fair comparison because that's a 65-watt part versus the 15-watt part that is in here, but we wanted to give you some kind of reference for performance. Uh, in terms of CPU performance, it, it is a pretty dramatic change over Bobcat. We're talking 20% better IPC, a little bit higher clocks, a little bit bigger cache, so overall performance for Jaguar over Bobcat is, is, is higher, but it's definitely going to be lower than the ultra-low voltage dual-core Ivy Bridge parts, and we show that in our testing. Graphically, um, the performance of Kabini uh, the A4-5000 is, is, is pretty good. Uh, we ran 3 d Mark 2013 on it. You can see the results there. We uh, compared it to Clover Trail. It's, it's a huge step over what you get out of Clover Trail, but it's also a pretty big step down from what you get on Ivy Bridge graphics. So again, it kind of fits in this weird placement in the market. Uh, we also did play some games on this. I was able to run. So the, the specs of our reference machine is it's a 4 gig uh, 4 gigs of memory, uh, a 5400 RPM standard hard drive, you've got the A4-5000 APU that runs at uh, 1.5 gigahertz, I think the GPU is 500 or 600 megahertz, um, and uh, a, a 1080p 14-inch screen. Now we were able to run Dirt 3 at 1920 by 1080 at low image quality settings, and then we were actually able to run Bioshock Infinite at 720p at low image quality settings as well, which we would had to turn the resolution down, but we were pretty impressed that we were able to play the game smoothly. Um, 
in terms of pricing, you'll expect these platforms to range from anywhere from $399 to $499, maybe a little bit higher depending on what you get. Um, but the real key for AMD on this is that they need to get in better systems than this in terms of build and materials. This is a fine reference machine. The keyboard we were not fans of. The screen was okay. Touchpad not fans of. Everything's plastic. Um, but it was okay, but it was not great. It's definitely not what you would consider a flagship device. And that's been AMD's biggest problem in these markets is getting in something that is cool, something that has cachet, something that has a status to it. Um, and I'm hoping, I believe, that things like Tomash and Kabini will be able to move AMD in that direction. So if you want more details, check out there are three different articles I said that launched today on PCPer.com. One that looks at the architecture of Tomash and Kambini specifically, one that looks at the different roadmaps for uh, the three APU mobility platforms, and one that looks at this device specifically and how it performs compared to some of the competition. I'm Ryan Schrout for PC Perspective. Thanks for watching.